Okay, so it's time to continue with the server, this time now for real installing Freeness. And since last time, or in the last episode, we finished it up by slapping in the, uh, the two Noxia fans, installing the SSD or the um, NVMe SSD, and unintentionally forcing me to remove later on again, but the GPU. I do not need that at all. Why? Because I played a bit around with that IPMI system from Asus and it is perfect for what I need it for. Now I built a miniature system here, it's under the table and I have a mobile monitor <laughs> and it, it's nothing else than that. Just to uh, have access to the web application using Windows instead of my iPad because the iPad doesn't do it. But I need a regular browser. So we were here already last time and I played around with it uh, for a couple of hours and I can do quite a lot but not everything. Like for example, I have access to sensor data and, and all kinds of informations. Well, I would need to start the system because the system is not running yet. So I can power it on just with the click of a button and it starts to boot. It will take a minute, two, three to boot up. A lot less than my original uh, Dell. What is it? Uh, a Dell? I know it's... R510 Power Edge, a Dell Power Edge R510. That was like 10 minutes to boot. This one is like two, three minutes. Now, as I said, I can do a lot with this thing. I can read out sensor data. I can uh, manipulate the fan curves of each zone, essentially. Asus groups them into zones and I still need to figure out exactly what a zone is. It doesn't seem like I have full access to like a PWM header, but I do think that, that each zone just is a header. So there is like a naming scheme problem for me, but I will figure that out later on. And I believe after we finish building the server, I will do a full episode just about what I can do with this because already after a few hours, or like, well, what was it, like two hours now, I found out so much more that I can do with this thing on this web UI than what I uh, had known previously. But for today, we are going to install Freeness and I already, okay, the system is fully booted up and we have sensor data for everything. I prepared myself a uh, bootable USB drive, which is here, but I won't need it because one of the coolest and, and really coolest aspects of uh, this whole IPMI thing is that I can launch this, I guess, HTML5 viewer, which allows me not to use uh, any Java application. Don't go away. And it gives me this window, which is essentially what I would see if I would connect the monitor. So I have full remote control of my server. I don't I don't need to go to it, I don't need to connect a, a, a keyboard or a mouse, I don't need anyway, but I don't need to connect a monitor, a, a keyboard, nothing. I have full access as if I was there. Now funnily enough, I already found out that there is like a maximum amount of commands you can send at a time. So if I for example just keep pressing down at some point, it will tell me uh, slow down a bit there, you are doing too much stuff. Now. One of the negative, or one of the things that I was missing in this whole uh, web UI is some level of what hardware do I have. So I wanted to know how much hard drives are being detected now because I am using those uh, five front, let's say, blades where we have uh, five, yeah, four hard drives on each, giving me 20 in total, and three of them are connected using the connectors on the motherboard. And for the leftover two, I have those uh, special PCIe to, uh, to whatever adapters and using this UI here I have not yet figured out or I think I won't figure out because it's not possible but there is no way for me now to see how many hard drives are being detected or if he sees the SSD or the NVMe drive there is no way for me to do that right now however using this remote controller what I can do is essentially the same as I me being physically at the server which I am now but in a regular setup it would be already in some some bigger server rack and I'm not physically there but what I can do here is a, C, okay. Uh, yeah, you, you can't press too many times. It will clog up the pipe and then it will do weird stuff. So what I can already see here are the two network connections. So the fiber connection card that I have in there is still working. I hope so at least. And I can have a look at the SATA controller, the uh, SATA configuration menu here. And what I can see is a bunch of hard drives. Not all of them, that's the point. If you see all the ports, you have a SATA controller with some sort of ID behind. And then down below you have another one and a third one. And essentially everything in here 
here seems to be the con here you have A1, ISATA, ISATA1, and here you have ISATA2. Wow, that's a mouthful. But we have a group of four hard drives here, a group of four hard drives here, and I guess those are those internal connections. So we have one blade, two blades, and then in the in the bottom of this page, we have the last one with uh, ISATA3. In the center of it all, we have that regular SATA controller, which doesn't have a special name to it, and there we have the SanDisk SSD, the 125 gig one, that we are going to use to install FreeNAS on. So all the controllers, or at least all the internal controllers, are working just fine, but what I cannot see are those adapters. I have no clue if they are working, I have no clue how they are working essentially, and I fear that I won't find it out until we install FreeNAS and just see if FreeNAS at least detects all the hard drives. If that isn't the case, that means that either the controllers aren't working or something is wrong. So for now, there is little I can do about that. I know that at least 12 hard drives are being detected and we will start figuring stuff out as soon as FreeNAS is on there. And if there we have 20 hard drives showing up, then we know everything is fine. But until then, little that I can do. Another menu which is interesting is just the NVMe configuration, just to see that, oh, there is a TimeTech MS43 in there, which has a terabyte, so that's fine. It's a PCIe 4 drive, and we are going to use it as cache, but at least I know that it is working. Now, one of the coolest things that I can do with this remote viewer here is, in the top right, we have that CD image, where I can just casually throw in a image and click on Start Media which will then pretend as if, if there was an optical drive and there was a CD in there, which is exactly what I would like to, which is perfect. That saves me so much time. Now, one thing that I cannot do is just uh, discard changes and exit. It won't boot into the CD because this works more like a soft reset. Like the, the system doesn't detect that there is a CD on there yet. So what you need to do is save changes and reset, which is more like a hard reboot and then then the CD will be detected. And this is kind of funny that it says no signal, as if there was a monitor on there saying no signal because the system is still like in booting process. Let's give it a minute. Oh yeah, this also happens a bunch of times. It will go into no network connection because of the reboot and boot and reboot and boot and it takes a bit of time. But this is essentially the same thing that would happen if I would be physically present with the monitor. It would take a bit, restart, start and all of that stuff. And here we are, exactly as expected, works flawlessly so far. And I can see that the CD image is loading something. I guess it is transmitting the whole CD, which may take some time given that it's like one and a half gigs and we are calculating there in kilobytes. So uh, yeah, I never went this far and I have no clue how long this will take. I hope not too long. But at least I got some coffee for the time. Ooh, it stopped now. <laughs> Unsure if that's something good. So there are two versions, or there are three versions, but uh, there are two at my disposal because they don't cost anything. We have FreeNAS, uh, the, the regular, the core one, and we have FreeNAS Scale. And there are a bunch of differences between the two, but the most important one I think would be that Scale allows you to, to better work with VMs. And as far as I could tell from the documentation, whatever, you can find on forums, there is no downside with going with scale instead of core. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use sc the, the scale subversion in case that I ever need some feature that is only present in the scale. I'm not sure if this will ever occur. Maybe yes, maybe not, but uh, we will just go with scale and see where this leads us. But 10 minutes, 11 minutes, this will take some time, but it gets quicker and quicker, quicker, slower, slower, even slower. Stop it. I think this will be taking a bit longer than I would have hoped for. Seven minutes. I will now be creating like 10, 20 gigs of raw footage, me looking at a screen where it says loading for six minutes. Great job. Or maybe in the meantime, we can play around a bit with this IPMI thing. Yeah, one thing that I will need to keep an eye on is the CPU temperature because I uh, basically set all the fans to between 10 and 40% of their max PVM setting, including the ones here from Silverstone. But the air is still pushing quite some air, but I guess it's not quite enough to um, hold on to a very heavy load for a permanent time. So my idea was to uh, set the whole system up, uh, set a proper fan curve, not just like the most random numbers that I could find, but like something usable in the long run and then 
while I'm copying over the whole other server, which will take days, uh, in that time I can track the temperature of everything, including the, the hard drives, because I'm writing to everything at that point. And then we can see if, if the whole system is stable enough for me to feel comfortable with it. Uh, I guess that's like the best option that I have. But for now, doing nothing, the CPU seems to be sitting at 45 degrees C, which is excellent. I'm fine with that. Uh, it's a server. It's not your average uh, Ryzen or Intel i something CPU. So uh, I'm fine with that. But... Uh, I guess we can tweak those numbers a bit more. And that's the same thing I, I did on my uh, my previous server. I can down clock or down everything that I can. Like sometimes you have in BIOS like performance mode and max performance mode and power saving mode. And if it is just there to s serve me files using SMB, I can also like disable half the chip and it will still function just fine. As long as I'm not running VMs or anything like heavy on it, I think I can get those numbers down without actually doing anything. Power supply failure detected. Why is there a power supply failure and how should this thing know about it? I guess because there is no connection between the power supply and the server. So it will just throw out a uh, error anyway. Oh, we are at 51%. We are over half. Yay. Du, 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 du. Oh, there we are. Oh, that took, took long enough. So install on... Oh, this will be a problem. I can already see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's not detecting the other 8 drives. But let's maybe first install FreeNAS and then, then we can take a look at that. Oh, I need to select one disk. Then let me select one. So, yes. Yes. <laughs> Why is my... Okay, in the bottom there is stuff going on. Okay, I guess more waiting. After an hour and a half, we reached something. Uh, okay, let's reboot this thing. Stop the media. Oh, this took an hour and a half to unpack. And it's not really the, the installation process. It's just sending the file over. Like, we had that counter in the top that was counting for so long. For the next time, I will just slap in the USB in the back of the server. That would have probably boiled down the installation process to like five minutes instead of like an hour and a half. Oh god. But still, we still have the issue that I don't know if the two leftover, not connectors, but more adapters are functioning. However, I also do believe that there might have been like a restriction based on me using that second PCIe port uh, or the third one, which I used because I needed to move the GPU in. So maybe the whole thing would still start working again the moment that I remove the GPU but I'm not sure to be honest but let's uh, let this thing boot up and just check quickly in, in uh, trueness or freeness trueness do, 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 do. network connection lost will something happen here new bus register assigned bus number three maybe continue hello hello oh okay no idea what happened there so we are online and it got assigned number three <laughs> okay. Uh, dick, dick, dick. What's the standard password? I don't remember the standard password. Oh yeah, I need to reassign it. That was that. Yeah. So installing Shunas or running it isn't really that complicated. Uh, once you installed everything, it will ask you to. It will not won't really ask you. You can access the web UI, and uh, you need to log in for that. However, you still need to set a um, a root password, administrator password, which you can do on the server side with number four. Just change local administrator password, and then you can choose the admin and do whatever you want. Retype new password. Great. It's just called admin. Yeah, and the standard user will just be admin. And for now, I will run with that. And here we are in TrueNAS, which looks a bit different than the uh, core version that I had before. But not that much, much has changed here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, so much. A bit here on the network side, these menus have changed, but it's also possible because the TrueNAS that I'm running on my older server, is it's a couple of months old, I'm not doing updates like frequently. So it's uh, possible that this has just been updated, or more, the the UI has been updated. So uh, on the storage, we, can, we, we could create the pool of drives and then create something accessible. And I'm 
Yep, and here we already see the unassigned disks where we have just 12 of them. And that's an issue. I need all of them, uh, all 20. So right now we are not having what I need to have. So I guess let's stop the server, remove the GPU, reattach everything where I already thought I would put it in the beginning and just see what that does. I got a lot of messages here. Powering off the server using just software. That's great. <laughs> I love that. I will use that so frequently. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's get the GPU out. I don't need you anymore. Hey, 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 why are you starting? Shit. I touched the space bar with some part of my body which started the server. That was kind of dumb. Uh, okay, original state. The network card is now again in the first PCIe slot and number two and three are empty. And then number four and six essentially are used again. Oh no, from the bottom down. It's one, it's three and it's six. Yeah. So let's power it on again and see what happens. I would actually prefer to go to to BIOS, but I'm not sure if I can force it or like uh, interrupt the boot to go into BIOS. Is there like an option? Force BIOS? Oh yeah, every time I boot it up, it boots like twice. And number two. Come on. Hmm. I somehow locked myself out of the remote control. Ah, there we are. Yeah, okay, we're already back in TrueNAS. So let's see if the hard drives now show up in TrueNAS. Uh, dig, 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 dig. Let's create a storage pool and we got 12. Hmm. Okay, time to read some manuals about my motherboard. So I'm suspecting that the PCIe slots are just deactivated uh, for some reason. Oh, I really hope so. I really hope that that is the case. Configuring an expansion card. No, actually all of them should be running fine. All of them should be. Or whatever the hell this is meaning. Gen 3 link. <laughs> Google. I figured it out and all it took was a bunch of hair and another 200 bucks. The funny thing about it doing a series like this where I release episode after episode but like uh, with a couple of weeks in between is that sometimes people will write me what I did wrong but at that point I have already figured it out because I am already filming the next episode and I did, an, I did a big oopsie here. It's not that of an expensive oopsie. It was easily solvable with another 200 euro piece but I I will explain what is going on. This here, this PCIe 4X to M.2 adapter, that's the issue. And the box of this thing kind of already explains it. It's a X4 PCIe Express to SFF8643 adapter for PCIe based U2 SSDs. It says so on the box. Now this should have been used, for example, with those Intel SSDs or those, yeah, basically SSDs that have a U2 port. This is meant to be used with a single drive. And the problem is what we need is something that has a SATA controller in order to be able to use the, the uh, U2 port here with a whole blade where we got four drives going. Uh, I was also told that apparently my CPUs, the, the AMD Epic whatever CPU can do that, but it has to be doable by the motherboard as well, but the motherboard never mentions that it can do PCIe to SATA splitting. There is apparently something that makes that possible. I don't know about it, but my motherboard doesn't have it either way. So what we need is a card like this with an integrated uh, SATA controller that is very necessary. Otherwise, it will not work. And because we got two of them, I don't need any of them. Oh yeah, a box inside a box inside a box. I love how they are packaging stuff up. <laughs> and another box. Why is Asus using so many boxes? Uh, 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 uh. And here we got my 250 euro solution. This is the Asus Pike 2 3088L. This is way too expensive for what it does for me. So I went over the list of uh, potential expansion cards for the motherboard because as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I want to stay as much on the supported list as possible. The problem is there is not a single like SATA controller expansion card on there. All 
they have are RAID cards. And some of them are like single port. And this is the dual port version where we got two uh, U2 ports. And the thing about this is, this is actually a RAID card. I can do RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID whatever using this card. However, and that I, I read on a forum, sorry, and that I read on a freaking forum, apparently there are two versions of this card. One where there is a TI mode, I read multiple times, uh, which is another word for pass-through, which, why is my bottle here? Anyway, apparently there are two versions of this card. One that has a TI mode built in and set up by default where I can pass through all the drives and then make them accessible immediately from OS or from like the motherboard bias or whatever and that's what I want and there is another version of the card that does just RAID so I will the, the hard drives will just show up in like whatever I can configure on this thing and there I can set up RAID 1, RAID 0, RAID 5, RAID whatever. However what I also read is that the Broadcom, I don't want to say anything wrong here, okay I'll have to google it later on, there is a very known Broadcom chip on here and apparently you can flash it uh, to another Broadcom card that does just pass through. So either way I can somehow make this thing work and pass through all the hard drives to OS and then see them in FreeNAS and then configure them in FreeNAS to whatever ZFS rate configuration that I want. And that's the plan now. For today, for the rest of this day, we will slap this in, hope that the drives show up, if not then make them show up, and I believe then we will need to end the episode, otherwise this will be a, like a 30 minutes thing, but I just hope they just show up. I, I, I sincerely hope. Oh please. And a nice little side aspect is that because I got the two ports card, I just need a single one of them, and I will only utilize a single one of my ports. Woohoo! You know what? No. Let's slap that one in, in the very bottom. And if we are already here, let's close the other PCIe brackets back on. Because otherwise I can guarantee you that it, I will forget about this. Where is the last bracket? Shit! Okay, I lost one of my PCIe brackets. I need to find it later. Yeah. Okay, this is an issue that I feared that we are going to run into. These, uh, oh, how are they called again? Yeah, these uh, U2 whatever SFF8643, I believe, cables are too short. They were perfectly fine for the old cards, but not for the new ones. So this will never work. Maybe I can do one of them, like if I pull really hard, but... I'm not feeling comfortable with this. However, I already thought about a solution because here I got two new ones which are 50 centimeter longer. So this should be perfectly fine now, or at least I hope so. But this will now also require me to remove the old ones, which is not going to be a fun endeavor whatsoever. Oh boy. One and two. And now the new longer ones. One and two. Now somehow fiddle this into the back compartment. Ah. One and come on, come on. Two. Ah, great. Now where should I put all of that spare cable in? Because I don't really want to keep it in the back chassis. So let's pull it maybe all back in front of the fan. Then let's install the fans and then try to somehow fiddle it in between the two. This looks somewhat acceptable to me. Can maybe somebody explain to me why this is yelling so much? Why is the front fan running at 4000 RPM? What is that front fan fa four or five? Front fan five. What the fuck? It's only one of them. Why is that one? What's the problem? What What are you doing? It, it, it's like 90% of IT problems in general. Have you tried shutting it off and on again? Oh, okay, what should we do now? I guess trying to get into BIOS, which we will do using remote control. And he should already have, yeah, he already booted into FreeNAS, but we don't want that. We first want to have a uh, look at the BIOS and whatever we can see there now. This will take a minute. Okay, here in the very bottom, I believe this LSI SAS3 MP controller, that one is new. 
Physical Disk Manager. Uh huh. Size 18 gigabytes. That's like one. Wasn't there a manual? Change controller properties. Okay, so I can see a physical discount of eight. So we know that already. That, that, that's good, that's good. The 12 that we already had plus eight gives us 20, which is the amount we have. So we, we somehow got the 20 discs running. But do I have access to them? And there we have the eight that we need. And all of them are for some reason disabled. But I don't want a rate zero. What I want is a RAID nothing. I want pass through. Let me Google. I have a PC here. Why am I using my phone? Ace, uh, Asus Pike 2 3008 HT pass through mode. No, this is something else. Because one of the possibilities I still have is just creating a uh, an army of RAID zeros or RAID nothings. Uh, basically, one disk per RAID and then just access them that way. Or I could just rate them. I mean, that is a possibility, but I wanted to do it uh, through FreeNAS. Or you know what? What if FreeNAS already has access to it and whatever I'm doing here will make it a problem? You know what? Yeah, maybe let's boot into FreeNAS and see if maybe the whole issue isn't, isn't any issue in the first place. That's, I mean, it's a possibility. Because the joke is, if you look at the product page of this thing, Asus will tell you something like, uh, just placing the Pi card can immediately enlarge the capacity, improve the performance and strengthen the signaling, whatever that means, uh, making it the great upgrade option. I want that enlarge the capacity. I don't want anything else, just enlarge the capacity. I don't need more. Okay, Freeness is running on point three. Show me the drives. Ooh, unassigned drives, I can see. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Ah, where can I see it in, in scale? I don't know. Well, here, unassigned disks, 18.19 uh, terabytes by 20. Woo, <laughs> we got 20 drives. Oh God. Okay, all of them seem to be accessible in Freeness now, which means that we are basically ready to create our storage pool and play around with what configuration are we going to choose. I'm not 100% sure yet. I have a few hours to find out before we film the next episode, but I will use those calculators to, to see what, what I am willing to give up and what I need to be sure that everything will be running smoothly for the next few years. But oh god, this was a wild ride. So another thing that we learned, these here are crap and that's, sorry, and that's probably the reason why you can buy them for like 10 bucks. Um, I mean crap. They are probably perfectly fine for those uh, like SSDs with an U2 plug, but uh, but for us, no, no, this this is not this is not great. Uh, this wouldn't have never served the purpose that I thought it would. But uh, good to know. We need a, a actual like controller card and the Asus Pike 3008 8i, which by the way was like a third of the price of anything else that would give me those two uh, U2 plugs plus a controller, like anything else was like 500 bucks plus, it was, it was incredible. Uh, so I believe in the end I even paid like the lowest amount possible to make this happen. So I am happy and it works. I can see all 20 drives show up in FreeNAS. A oh, TrueNAS, I, I need to stop saying FreeNAS. FreeNAS, it doesn't exist anymore. It's TrueNAS now. Anyway, I'm done for today. I have all the drives showing up. Now it's time to create the pool and then start playing around with yeah, performance, I guess. I can finally find out how performing this thing is. But for today, this is going to be it. I hope you enjoyed seeing my suffering and spending even more fucking money on, on something that I shouldn't have, but yeah. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next episode. Bye!